Welcome to the de Havilland Aircraft Museum. This photograph in the museum is of a de Havilland DH-95 Flamingo which first flew in December 1938. The Flamingo represented a milestone for de Havilland. Unlike earlier de Havilland designs, the Flamingo was an all-metal aircraft. Yet in 1940, de Havilland built what was probably their most famous aircraft, the DH-98 Mosquito, and it was made of wood. So why did they revert back to a wooden design when they already had experience of building metal aircraft? This is the subject of this video. The 1920s saw a massive public interest in aviation, and everyone wanted to learn to fly a light aircraft. De Havilland dominated the light aircraft market with the famous DH-60 Moth and its many derivatives. The Moth fuselage was wood with plywood panels attached to spruce stringers. Although there were some metal Moths, these were just consisting of a metal framework which was covered with fabric. The wings of a Moth were typically made of wood covered with fabric. For the 1934 air race, chief designer Arthur Hagg came up with a new design. This consisted of a plywood monocoque. It was strong, light and enabled Britain to win the Milden Hall to Melbourne air race. Later on, Arthur Hagg designed the DH-91 Albatross, which was a massive 100 foot or 32 meter wingspan passenger and mail transport aircraft, also using the same wooden design. In 1936, Ron Bishop took over as chief designer from Arthur Hagg, and the first aircraft he designed was this, the DH-95 Flamingo, which first flew in 1938. This was the first aircraft which de Havilland built that was made entirely of metal. It carried 17 passengers and provided a successful transport aircraft. Winston Churchill used one to journey to France in the early months of the war, before Dunkirk. It, it had the potential to be a very successful transport aircraft, but it was clear that war was imminent and de Havilland had to abandon development of this fine aircraft and move to a war footing. In 1939, Ron Bishop, designer of the successful Flamingo, was given a new project, which was to eventually become the famous wooden wonder, the DH-98 Mosquito. Instead of designing the new aircraft in metal, the Mosquito was built of wood. It used very similar construction techniques as the earlier DH-88 Comet Racer and the DH-91 Albatross. So why did Ron Bishop make use of Arthur Hagg's wooden designs instead of building on his successful experience with the Flamingo? There may be a number of reasons for this. Firstly, Getting resources for Freeman's Folly, as the plane was called by some in the Air Ministry, was difficult. Metal was difficult to procure, since as much as possible was being used to build Spitfires and Hurricanes for the upcoming battle. It was easier to procure wood than to get the government to sanction the purchase of valuable aircraft aluminium. In fact, de Havilland actually tried to sell the benefits of the Mosquito's wooden design to the Air Ministry and he argued that building a wooden aircraft also ensured that scarce resources would not be diverted from urgent military needs. The Air Ministry disagreed, but the Mosquito went ahead in the security of Salisbury Hall, near to where the museum is today, and it was built as a wooden aircraft. It is also possible that de Havilland was looking beyond just a single prototype like the one at the museum today. This new bomber, if approved, would need to be put into quantity production. Eventually, 
Over 7,000 of these aircraft were built. So who would do this work? It was well known that there were many companies in the local Hertfordshire area who had woodworking experience. Furniture manufacturers, piano makers and many others with skilled woodworking knowledge. And that was a resource that could be tapped to bring the Mosquito to production. There was another issue to consider as well. While Strawn Bishop himself had proven skills with designing a metal aircraft, what about the rest of the company? No doubt there were many other draftsmen who were still embedded in the wooden aircraft design. There was a final factor to consider when deciding whether to build the Mosquito out of metal or wood. With the existing level of engineering, a wooden aircraft would be lighter, pound for pound or kilo for kilo, than metal with the same strength. Nowadays we see metal aircraft which can far exceed the aerobatic performance of the wooden wonder, and they are built to last longer rather than for wartime utility. So they're built of metal and composite materials. But the Mosquito was never going to be a supersonic fighter. As they approached the higher speeds and stress associated with more modern aircraft, de Havilland went for a more all-metal construction, like this DH-110 Sea Vixen. And for civil aircraft after the war, the DH-106 Comet was also an all-metal construction. Who was the designer of this plane? Ron Bishop. So, could the Mosquito have been an all-metal aircraft? If so, would it have been successful? There were several companies which tried to build a similar aircraft out of metal during the 1940s. The Italian Breda company built an aircraft called the BA-88 Lynx, but it proved underpowered and therefore unworkable. The fact is, if you wanted a so-called metal mosquito, you cannot simply take a wooden design and replace all the wooden parts with metal. You'd have to start with a brand new design. Given the situation at the time, it made real sense to build a mosquito out of wood. For just a couple of years in the early part of World War II, it was the fastest aircraft in the European theatre of war. Other, faster, metal planes would come along later, but the Mosquito had a key role to play. High-speed bomber, night fighter, photo reconnaissance, fighter bomber, pathfinder for the heavy bombers, the Mosquito did it all, and we are very glad that it did. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if so, please like it and subscribe so that we know what types of content to publish in future. Do check out our website for opening hours and come to visit the museum at London Coney where you can see the original prototype mosquito sitting just a short distance from where it was first assembled back in 1940. You can also see the other mosquitoes alongside it together with other de Havilland aircraft both wooden and metal. See you at the museum.